Hey guys, this is Ed from Mission Ed Possible. Welcome back to my Atari 8-Bit Assembly Language tutorial series. So this is episode seven, and we're today we're gonna be looking at player missile graphics. So let's get into it. Okay, so this is our previous code that we had last time. And uh, before we get into it, what I wanna show is what we're gonna wanna show on the screen. Um, so I have actually created this uh, little uh, character here. So he's an eight by eight uh, sprite. And notice how he's got quite a few colors going on. We have brown, peach color, black, blue, etc. So with player missile graphics, we're gonna be able to have four colors that are independent of the background, which makes it so that we can have our character pop out of the screen, which is gonna be really, really cool. So in order to do that, we're gonna be using a whole other system and it's called player missile graphics. It's Atari's answer to a sprite system. And the idea here is that these pixels are gonna be transparent and so we'll overlay over the background. So you'll see how that works in a few minutes. Uh, one of the things that you'll notice here is how the graphic is really tall. And that is to show you how actual player missile graphics work. When they made the player missile graphics system, they had it so that you could have a, a uh, graphic that was eight pixels wide and 128 pixels high and which is kind of weird and it's just the way that they implemented it so the idea is if we need to do vertical movement we end up having to move the character around in memory and uh with what we're trying to do here this isn't an issue because we're planning on having the character be in the center and the map moves around it um, the good thing is with the mode that we're using, we actually have hardware scrolling that we can do. So that should be uh, something that's relatively easy to do. In order to use player missile graphics, we have to do a couple things. First off, we're gonna have video seven, and this is gonna be player missile graphics. Before we get started with that, um, one of my viewers, uh, Brian Wild, actually made a suggestion in one of the previous videos. And that was to, instead of using a, uh, a graphics loading uh, system, to actually just go through and set it up so that our graphics will load in at a certain origin. Um, I've already changed this to use uh, char set here. And so this is uh, the same thing we've got right here. And when you assemble this, that's all you have to do. It will automatically load it in at this location. So I don't need to have this whole load graphics uh, function. And actually I commented it out. I'm gonna go ahead and delete this because we don't need it. We're gonna be automatically loading our graphics in at a certain location. So that's a nice uh, bit of code savings there and uh, speed, etc., so that we don't have to use the CPU to copy anything. It just automatically will load that data in at that certain location. So thanks uh, to Brian Wild for uh, suggesting that, and I really like that. So let's uh, start off by looking at the way that player missile graphics are stored in the memory map. And I actually have a, uh, an image here so this is the, the player missile graphics memory map. This is the one that I found to be the best as far as looking at and being able to, to figure out where everything is. For whatever reason, <laughs> they have an unused space on here and I have no idea why this is here. Um, if you know, definitely let me know. But there's two modes that we can use player missile graphics in and that's double line and single line resolution. Uh, double line is uh, what we're gonna be using. But single line is gonna be the equivalent of um, Antic Mode 4. If you remember in Antic Mode 4, the pixels were not square, they are more rectangular. If you want to use that uh, mode, feel free to use single line uh, mode here. But since we're gonna be wanting to have our pixels match up with what our Antic Mode is, we're gonna be using double line resolution. And I'll explain how we end up doing that uh, soon. Um, but we have several sections here. We have the missiles section. And so notice there's player and there's missiles. So the idea is that there's four possible players and each one of them has their own missile, okay? 
And the idea with that is, you know, when games were designed back then, you know, it was a lot of things had shooting and all these things. They implemented it that way. And it's kind of odd today, but whatever, we can, we can work with it. So the deal is, is with the players and the missiles, they share the same color. So you can set player zero to be one color, player one to be another color, player two to be another color, and player three to be another color. And the missiles will automatically be that color as well. What we're gonna be doing though, is since we wanna have full color for our uh, players, we're gonna be using all four players as our character. They're just gonna be superimposed on top of each other. And with the way this works, we just set, you know, player zero to be the color we want for say the hair and then player one to be the color of the shirt, things like that. And we just overlay them and it looks like one color. The thing is here is we need to look at where in the memory this is stored. Uh, for right now, we're not going to deal with missiles um, because that's actually what I'd like to do in the future is do stuff like arrows and stuff like that. So we actually will be using the missile system eventually, but for now, let's only worry about the players. And so if you look here, we actually have a memory location called PM base, which is player missile base. And then we have offsets here of 512, 640, 768, 896, and 1024. So basically what we're gonna be filling in is these sections right here, player zero through player three. Um, and I actually have um, the location for that. I have saved that off. Uh, let me just copy and paste this here. Um, I you know like to put these into my code so that I can um, you know reference them later on. It makes it very handy. Sometimes finding these references can be difficult. Um, searching around, there's lots of different references out there, but they're not necessarily the best. Um, okay, so we've got that. And so what we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need to add a location that we're gonna start our uh, player missile graphics in. So I'm gonna call this PMG data, and I am going to put it at 6,000. And uh, there is gonna be some cases where we're gonna have some memory that's going to be um, wasted here, and we'll, we'll clean this up as we go. But the thing is, that we don't really have to worry about it too much because the idea here is that we're going to be referencing these equates and we can easily change these around as needed. So I'm going to put uh, player missile uh, data. Okay. And let me make this a little cleaner. And also let's put it in order just because uh, that. Okay. And so the first thing we want to do is we're going to want to pick some colors. Um, and so I am looking at in Photoshop, I've already drawn this character. Obviously you can draw him however you want. I would say that you probably want to limit yourself to eight by eight. Uh, if you're following along with the tutorial, um, but otherwise, I mean, you could make this really huge, but it's going to look really kind of odd compared to our eight by eight character set. Um, but so let's say we wanted to use these colors here. Well, we have uh, a brown, a peach, a black, blue, uh, and, and so there's let's see, one, two, three, four different colors. Obviously, we can make these colors whatever we want. So if you want to use a different skin tone, hair color, eye color, whatever you want to do, uh, go for it. Play around with it and, and make it look cool. First off, we're going to need to pick out the colors. Uh, and I've actually uh, picked out a few going to the uh, color palette. I'm gonna pick a brown. And uh, so I've actually already picked some of these colors. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, copy and paste this. So what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna add these colors to our setup colors function here. So, um, so I'm gonna go ahead and add these. Now black is reused, so I don't need that. But so I added a brown, a peach, and a blue, okay? And of course, you can call them whatever you want. Uh, oh, browns are also used, so we can get rid of that. Okay, so we only added really two new colors. Now, the deal is that these do not have to be the same shade. We could totally do two different colors for black. We can do different colors for brown. I'm kind of keeping it in the same palette so that we, you know, it, it looks more uniform when you have the same palette in the game. 
Um, so even though we're reusing some of these colors, it's okay. Um, so in order to set the player missile graphics colors, we're gonna need some new hardware equates. And that's what these are right here. So these player uh, P color uh, ones, and we're gonna go ahead and actually they're already in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, remove some of this stuff that I don't need. So we're gonna put in some comments here, color for uh, PM um, player, I guess player missile zero. Okay. All right, so zero, one, two, and three. Okay, we're gonna add these in here. And so we're gonna be using P color zero, P color one, P color two, P color three. And so I'm actually, I've already done this. So I'm gonna actually go ahead and copy these into our function here. So we're gonna do our brown, peach, blue, and black. We probably don't need that co uh, comment there. Um, pretty self-explanatory. Um, I'm gonna do player missile colors. Um, and we could actually put in here uh, char uh, char character set colors just so to kind of differentiate so we can take a look at this and know that this is where we're setting our player missile colors and this is where the character set colors are, are done. Oh, we've set our colors and there's, not much, there's nothing to see yet. So we have to keep moving on. The next thing that we need to do is we need to copy our data. So I'm gonna create a new file called uh, PMG data. And I'm gonna, it's gonna be another ASM file. And it's just gonna be a blank file for now. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do something similar to what we did for the graphics. Notice how we have the org and we have the bytes and all that stuff. We're gonna be doing something almost identical. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this in here and we're gonna say org uh, PMG data. Now, if you wanna use PMG or PMG data, that's up to you. For now, I'm just gonna keep it as PNG data, PMG data. Um, and so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go through and we're gonna set the data for each one of the players, okay? And if we look in Photoshop here, we can see the, uh, the pixels that we have here. So this is actually pretty straightforward. When we were dealing with the monochrome graphics modes, it wasn't a big deal, it's just zero or one. And so we have that here. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go through and we're gonna set uh, for each one of these colors what it's gonna be. Um, so it's a zero if it's there, or zero if it's not there, one if it's there. And that's all we have to do. And if we look here, we have these colors right here. I'm gonna copy and paste them in here just for now so that we can see the, uh, the colors. So if we need to reference them, I'll delete them afterwards, but just so we can kind of see uh, what colors we're dealing with. So for now, let's work on the brown uh, part. Now, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna ignore the top and the bottom. We're only gonna worry about this eight by eight section and you'll see why in a moment. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna do a bite and I'm just gonna use the same standard that I've been doing and that's been using binary. I feel like it's the easiest to understand uh, obviously, if you feel like that you want to just change this into hex or decimal or whatever, uh, you can make the file much smaller. It's not going to matter as far as the uh, execution goes or the file size. So I just keep it as binary because it's really easy. So we're going to have zero, zero for the, uh, the first two pixels here. And then we have one, 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 zero, zero. So that's the top of, of the image. And so we can just keep doing that. Um, so we have zero one and then all the way through and we're going to make eight lines of this so and this one's going to be the same because it looks the same and we're only dealing with the brown sections right now okay um so then we're going to have two that are empty now again we could just do you know if you wanted to you could just do that but for now, in case we wanted to change things, the thing that's kind of cool is if you have it in the binary, it's super easy to see where things are and be able to modify them if you want. Um, so now we have, so we got these two lines taken care of. Now let's do the uh, this one here. And then now we have two more brown, all right? 
So now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is our um, P color zero. I'm just gonna put brown, okay? Just for a uh, comment here. Now let's go to the next one. So I'm gonna do P color one, and that's gonna be peach. And um, so we're just gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and copy and paste these and then modify it. So we've got zeros here. Um, and then we have kind of almost an inverse thing going on here. So we have one, two, three, four over there and zero. And then we've got one, one, and then one, 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 one. And if we wanted to, we could make the hand colors the same. I just kind of was like, um, you know, you know, hmm. It could go, could go either way. I was thinking maybe that they'd have gloves on or something. Um, but, you know, that's one of those things that eventually what I want to do is I want to have it so that when you pick up gear, you actually get, uh, get that stuff. So, you know what? I am actually going to make that call right now. I'm going to say, let's make his hands the same color as his face. Um, just, uh, just for fun here. So we've got, I think that's it actually. So we've got his, his face right here. Hopefully you can see this with, with the ones and the zeros. Um, yeah, so here's his face and here's his hands. So that should be good for, for that. So now let's do, um, blue. Let's do his, uh, pants. Okay. We'll do blue. And of course, if you want to do a different color, totally fine. Uh, for right now, we're just putting in the pixels here and then you can easily change the palette. That's that's not a big deal at all. Um, so for this, I'm just gonna copy and paste um, the uh, these so that I can just edit them easily. Okay, so we have on the C0, let's see first, so this one, two, three, four. So on the fifth line, we're gonna change things. So we're gonna go, um, like this and then we're going to have two spaces there and then four and then the legs right here like that okay and now let's do black and black's really easy um so again i'm going to copy and paste these and we're going to go with p color three black i thought about making black the plea color zero but it really doesn't matter um just to because yeah to start off with the background color but whatever really doesn't matter okay so this is really easy <laughs> just we have the eyes and we have the feet one of the things i did mess around with was i tried changing the eye color to be something other than black and it looked weird <laughs> um Feel free, if you got some better uh, graphics and you wanna share them with me, put a link in the, the comments and I, I'd love to see them because you know, obviously if you've made some stuff, you know, I'd love to see it. But if you have some better graphics, hey, I'm a programmer, I'm working on learning more graphics, you know, pixel art stuff, um, but I definitely am not an expert. So uh, let's put the two eyes right there. I think that's right. Yeah, one, see, one, two, three, and then black. Or one, two, three, and then yep, yep, yep. Okay, and then we've got on the bottom, we've got these guys right here. Okay, so we have made our um, graphics for our character. All right, now we need to uh, set things up and we need to, for player missile graphics, and we need to load in the data. So now what we can do is we can do a uh, include for the file just like we've done for everything else. Uh, probably in the next video, I'm gonna change graphics to character set or something just because it's um, kind of annoying. But for now, we'll just keep it that. Okay, so we're gonna include uh, player missile graphics data and that's going to be at PMG data, which is gonna be this number right here, that's 6,000. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is we need to load in the graphics. Now, one of the things that I was mentioning earlier is the fact that it is, uh, 
you know, the sprites are really tall. <laughs> and um, the deal is, is that we need to take that into account. And also we don't know uh, what's currently in the memory. Uh, we can't assume that the memory is going to be empty. So one of the things we're gonna need to do is clear out the entire uh, memory location for each one of these players. So um, so I actually have a function that I've written already and I'm just gonna copy and paste it. Um, so I'm gonna copy and paste it and I'll show you what I'm doing here. Um, let's go ahead and put it right here, I guess. Okay, so I, I called it clear PMG. Uh, clears the memory for the player missile graphics. And so, uh, you know, all the other ones, we have the, the proc directive that says this is a procedure and the NP and all that. And so this right here is, oh, okay, so we need to call this PMG data because that's what I called it up here in my, uh, what I did before, I didn't call it that. So I'm just gonna call PMG data. Okay. So the deal is, is that if you remember when we were looking at that, uh, um, the image right here, it showed that player zero was stored here, player one, player two, player three. And so we actually have, um, you know, the, we can look at these locations and we can say, we're gonna add 512 and then we're gonna add 640, we're gonna add 768 and all that stuff for each one of these players. So that's what these are. So uh, 200 in hex equals 512 and 280, you know, th these right here are match up with these various, these uh, numbers right here. Um, I like to work in hex, uh, it just makes it lots cleaner. Uh, decimal is not fun to work with when you're dealing with the assembly. Okay, so what I've done is I've set these uh, equates to say the PMG data, which we have set up above was um, 6,000. And so we're gonna have, uh, the, the this is gonna be at 6,200, we're gonna start player zero. 60, you know, 6,280 is gonna be where player one is, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, so, first of all, what we're gonna be doing here is we're gonna be going through and we're gonna set um, a, uh, a variable here to say we're gonna be going down. We're gonna set the LDX, um, we're gonna load in 80 into the, or hex 80, into the X register and we're going to be going counting down. Now that's something I haven't really covered in the past when you're dealing with assembly language. Um, in a lot of assembly language stuff, you want to be as efficient as possible. And if you can remove uh, an instruction, that can be huge. And so one of the things that I've done in the past for a lot of these is I've done increments and then I've compared it each time. So like a standard issue for loop, if you're going from one to 10, would be, you know, you, you have four I equals one, or if you're one based, uh, you know, and you keep checking it to see if it equals 10 and when it does, then you exit. Well, with assembly, there's a there's kind of a, a opposite way of doing that. And that that is you can set it to 10 or nine in, in the case of zero based. And then what you can do is the, the B and E here, the branch not equal, it's checking to see if uh, a register is set to zero. And so what you can do is by counting down, you do not have to have a, uh, a check in there to say a, a CMP, which is the compare, uh, or CPX actually in this case, um, you don't have to compare uh, between uh, the, the value that you're looking for and, you know, what it's at. And you can just say, we're just going to go to zero. And so we can just do decrement. Um, so we're going to, what we're going to do here is we're going to store in zero into each of these X locations. It's going to start at 80 and then go down to 79, 70, you know, all that stuff. Uh, and it's going to decrement and it's going to keep looping here. All it's going to do is it's going to say, take this section of memory, um, and it's gonna clear it all out, just so we don't have to worry about any garbage being in there. And so I'm gonna go ahead and call this function. Uh, it's just clear PMG. So I'm just gonna put this up here, clear PMG, okay? And so that's gonna go through, clear all our data out. The next thing we need to do is load in 
the data that we've created. We're almost there. We're yeah. setting up player missile graphics can be kind of a pain, and I've seen a lot of different uh, methods for doing it, and they they seem to overcomplicate things. And I'm trying to do uh, as simple as I can here. Um, obviously, if you want to know more about player missile graphics, uh, there's a lot more stuff that you can do with it. As far as like you can do. Uh, single line resolution you can do uh, making the characters wide you can do all kinds of stuff with that and we're, we're keeping it really simple with this uh, which makes things actually really nice and that for the fact that we're not going to have to do a bunch of tricks um, and uh, you know keeping this as straightforward as possible okay uh, so the next thing we need to do is we need to load in the data so I actually call this load PMG okay and so I'm just going to put it right here. And so notice we have a, uh, a thing here where it's got PMG data and it's got duplicate code, which is not ideal. In, in a general case, you don't want to have duplicate code. In this particular case, I don't think it matters too much because these are handled by the assembler. So while there's four extra lines here of of code, it doesn't actually turn into any uh, code that's going to be seen by the machine. Um, so it's going to be going through and putting in PMG data equals 6,000 plus 200, and it's going to set this PMG equals P0. And then all it's going to do is replace this with that 6,200 and 6,280, etc. cetera. The assembler is going to take care of all this work for us. And so it's, it's fine. Um, if this gave me a lot of heartburn, having this duplicate code, I could put it outside of these functions. But to be honest, that would kind of be a little bit more cluttered in my opinion, because this we, we're, we're only dealing with these uh, P0, P1 and all this stuff within these two functions. And um, so I think it's okay. Uh, feel free if you want to do something different, go for it. <laughs> but in this, it's a little bit more complicated. Now I am going to be incrementing on this time. And the reason why is because, uh, we got to, we do some math in here and it gets a little funky. So I just wanted to keep it simple and said, okay, we're going to say LDX equals zero and we're going to compare it with eight. And the reason why we have eight is we have eight pixels in our image. Okay. And so notice we have some, um, uh, math in here. Um, so, um, oh, interesting okay so let's back up a moment <laughs> um i realized why i used um pmg instead of pmg data up here um there's actually two uh different variables that we need to worry about so there's pmg which is going to be where our location is and then we're going to have pmg data which is going to be our image data that we're going to be loading in so i'm actually going to change this to be pmg and in here um, we, we have these, we want to remove. Okay. Um, sorry about that. I noticed when we got down to here that this is an issue and that we have two different variables. Okay. And so I'm just going to do that. And then in our PMG data, we have our data coming in here. Uh, and we actually don't need to set an org for this. We're going to set it as PMG data. So we've called that PMG data and we've called our memory location PMG. Okay. So this is all good now. So we have PMG as being our memory location where we're going to be storing our player missile graphics. And then we have PMG data is going to be the data that we're going to be loading in our image data. Okay. Um, and so notice we have some math going on here. So we have uh, plus eight, plus 16, plus 24. And then we have these uh, plus 64, plus 64 on all these. Now, the reason why I'm doing it this way is because of this, is what I was mentioning earlier about the image being really tall. The image in a uh, double line resolution is going to be, uh, the, the graphic for this is gonna be 128 pixels tall. So what we're gonna be doing here is we're gonna be taking it in the middle, basically, and we're gonna say plus 64, all right? And so we're gonna be putting it right here. And 
this data might, uh, we may need to tweak things as far as where it's going to be. But the idea here is that we're going to be copying this data, you know, the, the, the pixel data that we have in there, and we're going to be copying it to uh, wherever P0 is, and we're going to be adding 64 to it. Um, now, one of the things we could do is we could add 64 to each one of these. That would be fine too. Um, it doesn't really matter. Um, but in any case, what we're going to be doing here is this PMG data is going to be in here. And then we're going to say, uh, it starts off at zero and we're going to say plus eight is this one plus 16 is this one plus, you know, 24 is that one. And so that's what these guys are, right? So it's loading in each one of our players and we're copying them, copying that data to uh, the zero, one, two, three, plus a 64 uh, byte offset. And that way, so that it puts it in the middle of the image. Now we do that so that our character shows up in the middle of the screen. Okay. If we put it at the top, then the player would be at the top of the screen and we don't want that. We want him to be in the middle. And the cool thing is with this kind of game, he'll only stay there. You know, he, he won't be moving around on the screen. Uh, now we, we probably want to get into some animation eventually, but the point is that he will be, uh, in the center of the screen at all times. So the cool thing is we don't have to mess with moving him. Um, we do have the ability with player missile graphics of changing the horizontal, um, position of, of the character, uh, but not vertical, which is kind of odd. Um, so when we get into, when we're going to be doing missiles, like, uh, you know, if we have a bow and arrow and stuff like that, um, then we will have to deal with, um, you know, moving it manually by copying the data. Um, not ideal, but we got to deal with what we got to deal with. Okay. Um, so this loop is going to copy all this data and so we got to call it. So we got uh, clear PMG and we got load PMG. Um, now we want to make sure to do this in the correct order because uh, obviously we want to clear the data before we copy the data. If we copy it first, that's going to be a problem because it's just going to be blank. So um, the last thing we need to do is to set up player missile graphics. We've got it, the, we've got the color set and we've got the data loaded in. Now we just need to display it. Um, so I actually have another function in here called setup PMG. And it's pretty straightforward. There's a couple things we need to uh, deal with, but um, let's go in here. Let's go load. We'll put it after here. And, you know, we could, if we want to, put this in another uh, file uh, with all the PMG data stuff. Um, but for now, it's fine the way it is. So we've got set up PMG. Now, this is where it gets a little, um, I, I got to explain some stuff here. So first off, we're going to be loading in the location of our PMG variable, which is that 6,000 into a variable called PM base, which is already been, I already copied it into here. We can probably get rid of some spacing. Um, and so basically PM base is where you tell the, uh, you know, the computer that we're going to be going into, uh, we're going to be using this location. Um, I have some, some of these variables in decimal. Um, we don't need this. That was because I was, I was having to decode a lot of basic code. Unfortunately, a lot of the resources out there, and I, this is something I've struggled with a, uh, a huge amount. A lot of the resources show you how to do player missile graphics in basic and we're not doing basic here. And so it's really frustrating because everything in basic is in decimal and you were assembly language programmers. We don't do decimal. We do <laughs> set hex. So, um, so we have uh, priority and we're going to say, um, let's see resolution PM resolution. And then that's fine. Okay. Sorry, I had to add some uh, some more variables here that we needed. Some some I always call them variables. They're actually called equates in um, assembly language. So um, so the first one we're going to have, and I'm going to go through each one of these. 
PM base, as I said, is the base address for your player missile data. So whatever we set this to, the computer is expecting to see something like this, okay? Um, so wherever, you know, this PM base, that's, we saw that before, that's this variable right here. Okay, uh, S, this SDM CTL. Uh, so that one is, let's see, SDM CTL. I don't remember, it's something control. Uh, and But basically this is where we set the uh, double line resolution and we set it to an odd it's a weird number that wants a 2e or 46 in decimal that tells it that it wants to go into double line resolution uh, i don't remember what it was to do single line uh, resolution uh you know there's docs out there that tell it but the idea is that we want to set 2e to this sdm ctl um don't like magic numbers but yeah it is what it is and here I just use decimal. All right, whatever. So the next one is this uh, GRA CTL. So this is the graphics control uh, register. Uh, so we have that right here, basically to enable or disable player missile graphics. Uh, we have to set a three, another magic number into that uh, very or into that register to say we're going to enable player missile graphics. Um, and then the next one is to set this GR prior. That's a priority register for player missile graphics. There's some data out there on telling you where you want the priority list to be. Uh, and what this is when you're dealing with the priority of, of this is uh, if you're familiar with uh, Z indexing, basically it's a thing that says what is on top of, of what, so that you can say, we want the player to be underneath the background if you want or above or you can have say one player is above another and stuff like that we don't care about that uh, all of our players are going to be superimposed and we just want to make sure they are on the complete foreground we want nothing to uh, be in front of them um, we may in the future want to be like obstructed or something but for right now we're only worrying about saying that the players have uh, always have priority so if we set a one there that's how we do that and then the last thing we need to do is we need to set the horizontal position so notice we have these h pause p0 through three and so these are the horizontal positions and so i have uh, figured out that a decimal of 120 is the center of the screen um, now, one of the things we're going to need to deal with is what is center and how we're going to be displaying our background and all that. But for right now, just setting it to 120 means it's going to be in the center of the screen. Okay. Um, H pause zero through three, it's setting the same value for each one of these. If I wanted to uh, show you like how to split them up, we could set these to different values. But for right now, and play around with it. If you want to set these to different values, your character will be kind of split up into four different locations. Uh, but we're setting it to be the same location and uh, then we end the function and we're good to go. So we need to call set up PMG. And so, you know, we can actually do these, some of these in any order. Um, I'm gonna do it in this order and I'm actually gonna do this, um, I think before we display the, the map. Um, it really doesn't matter, but I don't know. It just seems wrong to me to display the map before we set up the character. Um, okay. So got all the functions created. Um, and so let's see if we can compile this thing. So it's main, um, the ASM. Okay. It, uh, compile. I always say compile assembled. <laughs> uh, so we're going to run Altira and see what we got. Okay, there we go. So we now have our character on the screen using player missile graphics. Um, one of the things you'll notice here is the background might be a little bit too busy. Um, you can kind of, I mean, you can see him, obviously. His feet don't stand out. Um, but I think that, you know, in the future videos, we're gonna be probably uh, clearing this out a little bit so that's a little bit uh, cleaner. We'll get into that in the next video. But there you have it. We now have player missile graphics set up. So I think it looks pretty cool. <laughs> you know, obviously uh, his feet don't stand out and uh, you know, we could 
you know, I don't know if it makes sense to, to make his feet all, all blue. Only so much we can do with an eight by eight pixel graphic, but it looks cool because it does use different colors than the background. And that's one of my major pet peeves with a lot of games is that the characters don't stand out from the background. And I think with him, it, it definitely will. And especially when we move around, I think when we start moving around, we have animation, it'll be a lot easier to see. Hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, be sure to hit the like button. Really appreciate it. I will see you in the next adventure. Take care.